Hi, welcome to the Amarillo Public Library. I'm Cindy Wallace, and today we're going to cover book folding. We thought we'd take some time today and show you some tips and tricks and talk about the patterns. Maybe I'll get you hooked on one of my favorite crafts. So, the nice thing about this craft is it takes very little to be really successful at. Things you'll want to gather up are going to be things like um, pencils, but I like mechanical pencils because I don't have to constantly sharpen them. I love my small pair of sharp scissors because I use them for several different things during the project. Always going to need some scotch tape later in the project. We don't use that much of it. And you're going to need things like clear rulers or at least a ruler that has centimeters in it um, and a book and a pattern. Then, then you're pretty much ready to go. Something I wanted to point out on your ruler is I only use centimeters, not inches at all. Every single thing, every pattern, every measurement I do today will only be in centimeters. So please keep that in mind. So first I thought we might talk about how the pattern is generated, how you pick the books maybe that go with the pattern. Because the first thing you need is a pattern. And what I do to produce the pattern is I use a combination of clip art and Photoshop and a piece of software called Bookami, B-O-O-K-A-M-I, that I got um, from the UK. I couldn't find any software that I wanted um, in the United States. So I went across the pond for my software. Now there are things like clip art where you just have this really pretty little bunny. I got him done and as you can see I got a pattern made but I wasn't happy in the long run. He looked a little not quite finished to me. So I took my clip art pattern back to Photoshop and I added some leaves. And I have to do that before I can even generate my pattern. So in my pattern it matters um, how many pages there are in the book and how tall the book is. I also don't like deckled edges on my books. I like real smooth edges on the books that I do all the book folding on. And I'm just going to use the bunny rabbit as an example. So I generated the pattern. I decided I wanted the bunny with the leaves and it turns out I need at least 399 leaves or pages for this particular pattern and I can generate the pattern so that it fits the book that I need. This is the book that I'm working on. Usually when I have my paper in, they just come pick up the finished kit and all the work is done. So I thought we'd back up just a tiny bit so you'd know how I got there. So with the um, bunny book, I made sure, based on my pattern, that it was in this case, I'm using centimeters, remember, it's just a, just a hair over 23 centimeters. So I put 23.5 in my pattern generator. And then I made real sure that I had a page one, and I did have to make the page one because not all books start on page one. So I actually hand wrote in based on extra pages at the beginning of my book and made sure I had a one, three, five, seven. And my pattern told me I need a minimum of 399 pages. So I can't use a book with 250 pages. My book had to have at least 399. Of the books that I picked for the bunny project, I got really lucky because I had one, the cardstock piece at the end, which I don't normally use for folding. It's a leftover piece that I'll cut out at the very end. But as you can see from my 400 here, my pattern actually is going to use every page in this book. So it's time to start. Now we're going to make horizontal lines on every page in our book because we're going to need them. In fact, we're going to make two horizontal lines. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. That's our first step. Okay guys, so here's how I mark my pages and you're going to do the entire book this way. The lines are already marked because this is an actual book I'm working on, but I wanted to go ahead and show you exactly how I would lay centimeters out and mark it right there. Now you can see that I've got a piece of scrap 
uh, it's just typewriter paper, it's blue. You probably can see the pencil marks where I've marked this whole book up. But what I wanted to demonstrate was I make a tick mark here on the one and here on the zero. Then I drop down to the other end of my book. You can actually see where I made them. The lines are darker right there. But I line it up and I make a tick mark and a tick mark. Then I take my ruler and I actually draw the lines. They don't have to be very dark. All the way across all the way across, and that's how I have produced every line in this book. Now that we have all of our horizontal lines drawn on every page in our book, it's time to start making the tick marks. We're going to use our pattern at this point, our ruler, our mechanical pencil. We're going to actually begin working on what in this case is called a mark, measure, cut, and fold combination. So now that we have our lines, our horizontal lines drawn throughout the entire book, it's time to start with our tick marks and the pattern. So if you'll remember, this time I was using my bunny rabbit with the leaves that I have done and I have double checked my number of pages, my book height, this is a combi cut and fold pattern. I have everything copyrighted when I create it and it's time to flip the page and not to scare anybody, but now we've got a few numbers to deal with and this is probably going to take the longest amount of time of anything in your book. Uh, it's very important with all of these lines and these tick marks that we're fixing to create that you're accurate and I'm reminding you again we're using centimeters only. So I'm fixing to lay this to the side where I can see it. It may be out of camera angle a little bit, but I wanted you to see exactly how I would put the tick marks in. I'm on page one and I'm looking at number one on that numbered pattern. This time I've got, I'm using my little scrap of paper again because I can see so much better when I create contrast. This is why I've got the cream color and the blue. Um, and I actually have this close to my body when I'm doing this, but I line it up with the zero centimeter right here on the edge of the paper. And my first mark is a 14.4, so 14.4. The next mark is 14.7, so 14.7. And that's all that's on page one. I'm looking at my pattern. Page three has two marks as well. So here I am on page three. I like the contrast. I lay the ruler up here. This is where you've got to be uh, consistent and careful. I also might mention that I don't want you to change your ruler once you've started, whether you're using the paper ruler that I provide or you go to one of the stores like Walmart or Office Depot and get a clear ruler, which is my favorite. I use these all the time. Um, just use the same one, no matter which one you're going to do your book with. Now I'm on page three and it's 14.4, make a little tick mark, and 14.8, make a little tick mark. So right there, and I'm gonna go through the entire book, very carefully lining up my marks, and I just need a little tick mark here. I'm gonna cut them later, but I do the whole book one step at a time. I do the whole book with the horizontal lines. Then I do the whole book with the tick marks. Now that we finished making those bazillion tick marks in our book, we're going to go with our very sharp scissors and we're going to cut little lines that we've marked in our book. So it's time to do all the cutting. Usually that can be done in less than an hour. And as soon as I've got my tick marks all the way through my book, then it's time to cut. So I'm going to go back to page one. Now it's time to cut. Let's pretend that I've done the entire book. The tick marks for this book will probably take me an hour, two hours, depending on how focused I am. And I'm fixing to rotate the book, but you'll still be able to see, but this is how I want you to do it when you're cutting. So now I've rotated the book, and this is where those lines become really important. And I go pretty fast once I get started, but I cut on each little tick mark down to the second line. I cut on the tick mark down to the second line. Lift the page over, 
cut on the tick mark down to that second line. Cut on the tick mark down to the second line. I'm going to do one more because I want to be able to show you the folding part in a moment. Maybe two more. And I want you to know that, let me do this on purpose. See how far I cut past that second line? Won't hurt a single thing. In fact, I think it's better to cut a little past that uh, second line because to me it makes it a lot easier to fold when I start flying through my book folding pages. So watch. Past the second line. Past the second line. Past this. And I'm being very careful to try to keep my lines straight. That's why I turn the book, I have it towards me, and I'm making real sharp straight lines with my cuts. So when you're looking at the pattern, notice that it's only going to be odd numbered pages that we're working on. And where you might think it's page one, page two, it's just called a leaf. Those front and back is just one page and it's called a leaf. But we're only going to make marks and cuts and folds on the odd pages like you can see right there in front of you, page one, three, five, seven only and forever, no exceptions. These will always be done on the odd numbered single page. Great, now we're to the really exciting part. We're gonna start the folding. It's gonna be every other folded down at the first line and then the second and fourth and sixth ones. Those are all gonna be folded down on a second line. But I'm gonna show you exactly how I want you to do the folding so that you'll be able to create things like what we're showing here today. Let's get started. Now we've got our horizontal lines, we've made all of our cut marks throughout our book, and it's time to rotate the book. So watch what I'm doing, because I'm rotating the book completely around so that I can do the folding step. Now these are the little tips and tricks I've learned all along the way. Didn't actually have a formal class, but I think you'll love my tips and tricks. So think of this as down, double down, folding every other one. I've got a piece of scrap cardstock. I do like the contrasting colors. And see how I'm lining it up to that first line? Well, I also put pieces of paper, the same blue piece you saw me use earlier. See how I've got contrast when I do that? I really like to see the edges of my pages pretty much at all times. Now I can see the pencil line just a smidgen right here in front of it because I'm allowing a little tiny bit of space for my fold and like I said it's going to be every other one and I'm using this only as a guide. The green cardstock is just a guide. This fold matters because this fold is going to show. Some people use a bone folder to crease. I use my fingernail most of the time. This fold must be smooth and clean, keep your hands clean and pretty, and it's every other one. And I'll do a couple more of these in a moment. But then I wanted you to see that we still have that second line. I actually toss the green aside. This one won't show. It doesn't matter near as much. Remember I said it was okay to cut past the line. This won't show. You can fold it any old way you want as long as you get it good and deep so it doesn't show in our finished pattern. So I'm going to do that again, go into the next page. And this is what I actually do. I have a piece of bigger, a little bit bigger piece of cardstock. I have an old headband, and I really do do this. I used to use rubber bands, but the headband has worked great for the last half a dozen books. It keeps it clean, it holds everything in place while I'm working. So now I'm ready to fold the next page. Once you get going, this goes super fast. There's my contrast, get my little scrap of cardstock, and to repeat what we just did, every other one folding down at that first line. So folding, keeping it even, neat, and clean as you go, because this edge will show throughout the entire finished product. Then I toss it aside, I grab that tab that's sticking up right there, and I fold him back, and I don't worry too much about him ever, not ever, ever. I take the headband off, put it on my wrist for a moment, 
refold this up, make sure everything stays laying where it should. Slip this in place to hold it. Keep it clean, out of my way while I work. We'll do one last one. Contrast, well maybe we'll do two because I have multiple folds on that next one, I think. So here we go. As you can see, it's possible to speed up once you get the hang of it. Fold out of my way. Fold deep. This one doesn't matter. Not like those first ones do. We'll do one more because I think the next page has a couple of multiples on it. Okay, now, because this is going to be one of your questions, is when you have multiple cuts on one page. The rule is the same no matter what we're doing. First one, fold down. By the way, the first and the last one always fold down. If you find out that this one's left sticking up, you've mismarked something and accidentally not have enough lines or something because these two end ones always fold down. So down, leave that one, down, leave that little tiny one, and down. See, the ends are always folded at that first line. Slip aside. Get rid of these little tabs, fold them down, because we're going to use those spaces we're making in just a moment. And you do the entire book this way. I hope you've been peeking along the way to see if your design is looking the way that you are expecting it to look. I know I do. So after you've done all the folding of these thousand little tabs in your book, this is what your finished product will look like with the folds the way that I've got them on the pattern that I'm sharing with you, the combi fold. So it looks perfectly finished. You can stop right here if you want to. You can see the design. You can flip through it and spread it out or squish it up a little bit so your design looks exactly like you want. Sometimes I add special ribbons and stuff to hold it just like I want. If you want to take it one step further, and while I'm fine with this, I did a lot of books this way, I really recommend, for a little more excitement, that we add a dose of color. A little bit to start with, more to come. But as you can see by this dragonfly, I've only used two colors, so that wasn't too bad, because you will be inserting little strips of paper in, and that's where the tape comes in, because you'll be gluing or taping those down so that they don't slide right out of your book. And that is a choice that you'll be making, whether to stop at this point or to go ahead with the color. So, at this point, after you've made all of your folds, your little clips, everything's folded down, if you do the entire book that way, you'll have a beautiful pattern like the bumblebee with no color. And you can stop right there if you want, or you can add color, which I figure most of you would probably like to do. And it's so easy. I take that cardstock um, and I cut it in roughly a half inch. It can be a little less, a, a little more. I, I've done all kinds of sizes. As long as what I put in the fold goes all the way up in the fold, it doesn't really matter. But it does matter that it doesn't slip out of your book, because that's the first, thi the first thing that's going to happen if you don't, in some fashion, tape it down a little bit, then it's gonna slide out of your book. So now I've got one little piece of black paper. This is where the design is built right here. I'm gonna fold it up, just like you saw me do when we were folding down. I keep it clean. This also presses a little bit as I go. I'm getting another strip of paper that I have cut. And keep in mind, when I've got long, you know, some of my pieces, will cover the entire page of a book like on that dragon. So I just cut longer strips out of my cardstock. And I've tried all kinds of cardstock, sparkly ones. They don't show as well because all that matters is this one edge right here. So once again, I slip it up, make sure it's all the way tucked up in there and not receding any. Then use a little piece of tape, be frugal, Let's do a couple more, just so you can see what it looks like when I have multiple cuts. All the way up into the very edge, 
sorry, let me make sure on this one. Because I'm actually planning to leave these right in place once I get them in. Tiny piece of tape to hold it in place. And do one more. Because I wanted you to see the multiple cuts and then I'll show them to you. Okay. Sometimes your cuts are going to go from here to here and you're going to need that longer piece of paper or multiple colors of paper to work with. This design is only going to have green and probably brown when I'm completely done. But now you can see I've got detail here and detail here. It's not unusual on a bigger pattern to have to put more than one piece of tape to hold it in place. See, I've got a piece of tape there and a tiny little piece of tape over here somewhere because I like to hold the edges down. And you do the entire book just like what you're looking at. It's okay to stop and check at any point, but what you're after is the detail beginning to show up in your design. And from here, it's just a matter of taking the small strips of whatever color of paper you want your design to be and going throughout the book, gently taping them into place, and before you know it, you've got a finished design. So now that we've gotten all the folding done, you have some choices to make, but I wanted to kind of show you too um, where I might guide a beginner to start uh, with an eye on an advanced technique. They're all very similar. The way I mark them, measure them, all the same in every single one of these, but you can tell by looking, some of them look a little harder than others. So in this case, I would take a beginner and start them with something fun, like the dragon, which was very popular when we first did it. But you can see it's all one color. And I use cardstock for these long spaces from the top to the bottom. It keeps the pages from being wavy. So I'd use a strong piece of either uh, quilling paper, cardstock, something heavier than regular typewriter paper for this kind of project. Makes it very easy. I tape the little pieces into place per page as I go, and it's really unique. When it's done, it's your dragon. Then, if I, if I can get you to finish one of these, I would take you using the very same techniques that we built on the first one into an intermediate one, like the sunflower. As you can see, the sunflower has several colors instead of just one, so on lots of different pages you'll be using two or three colors and taping those in place, but the technique is exactly like we used on the dragon. And then I would move you up to something at the level of the sugar skull, one of my favorite projects we've ever done but it took a, a couple of weeks off and on to do, and you can see there are many different little pieces of color in these cutouts in the sugar skull. It's gonna take some extra patience and time. There's nothing you can do that I can't help you fix. Believe me, I've made all the mistakes that can be made, and I am fearless at repairing anything. You can't, you can't even see where my mistakes are. But I wouldn't have you start here. I would have you start with a simple one like the dragon, move up to some partial color before you attempted a complex one. So now you've got the big picture. What I wanted to let you know was once I've generated the patterns, it's not too hard to pick a book out if you have a favorite pattern. You could request it ahead of time or call me at the library and I could easily generate a pattern based on a book that I've picked out from the basement. I'm so glad that you came and watched the program today and I hope maybe you'll look at it once or twice more. If you need help with techniques, I'm always available. All you have to do is call and make an appointment. Thank you for being here today.